Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. As I promised, I will go over the guide for applying to electives. Now, as a final year medical student, being from a college where not a lot of information was available on how to apply for electives, it was a confusing procedure and took me a lot of time to gather and process this information. So I would like to go over with you the common misconceptions and also the things which you need to get done to apply for your electives because it almost takes a year in advance for you to apply for this elective so it's like a two-year process if you want to do it perfectly just in case if you want to know when you should apply for electives and how much it will cost i have two separate videos for that right now i am showing it to you on the screen so there is this ideal usml timeline for international medical students this is the video where i tell you guys when you should go for electives and uh, if it's possible for you do watch this because it gives you the whole timeline for the application then again if you're interested in how much an elective will cost there is a separate video for that the usml costing for imgs so in the elective section i go over in detail how much will it cost another video which i will recommend for you guys to watch is the guide to clinical electives in the united states of america this is the second video i made in this video i went over the process of like applying and the general nuances but I wanted to do a detailed video on how the whole application process works, which is this. So even before I start this video, let me quickly go over the contents of what this video is going to cover. So for elective requirements, USML step one score is often necessary. And as the elective process is becoming more competitive, people who will have a step one score will get better electives and maybe even cheaper. So this is still optional. There are places where USML step one is not required and I will go over the list soon. So for TOEFL, TOEFL is also optional. Sometimes the institutes is, are going to give you uh, like a form which is to be filled up by, by your dean mentioning that like uh, your university teaches medicine in English. So like TOEFL is mandatory for some places and optional for others. You will require your CV, a personal statement. Uh, so I will go over from 5 to 10 deans later. I will give you a, a, like how it should be. I will show you my deans later then medical school transcript. There are a lot of confusion regarding how you should form this. Then LORs from your medical school. Usually they will ask for like two or two LORs like one from your professor and maybe another one from your dean. So the deans later can be used as like an LOR too. Health insurance is needed and malpractice insurance of course. So the major point which I'm going to cover in this video is the AAMC form. This causes a lot of confusion and I get a lot of questions from my peers who have applied for electives in the past and who are applying and also the proof of tuberculosis that's IGRA, PPD, X-ray, like how that works. So you will finally require a B1, B2 visa or an F1 visa uh, in case you are not a green card holder or a US citizen and an IMG. Uh, for applying to electives. With that being said, I told you that I am going to give you a list for electives with step one scores and without step one scores. So my friend, Dr. Rohit Nathani, he did his MBBS from KEM Mumbai. Right now he's working in St. Luke's Mount Sinai. Great chap. He made an online blog where he made a list of uh, US clinical electives that request step one score. So I will put the website link uh, in the description down below. So as you can see, there are like Cleveland Clinic, University of North Carolina. These are the places which are going to ask for a USML test step one score even before they consider your application. So without a step one score, you won't be able to apply to these places. So this list might have changed. So this was maybe a year back or so. So I would say like do your own research. So this is these are the places where you won't be requiring USML step one. So that's Mount Sinai. Rohit did his elective at Mount Sinai and went on to match there. So yeah, like he had a step one score, but still applied for Mount Sinai and there he matched. So anyway, so Mount Sinai doesn't require USML step one as of yet. And then there are like the other places. I did my elective, uh, one of my electives at UAB. And uh, so then there are these other places. That being said, I will quickly show you the trick of finding electives. This took me a lot of time to figure out. So first of all, go to Google. Then you find out the place you want to apply to. Let's say you have a step one score and you want to apply to Cleveland Clinic. So you need to type in Cleveland Clinic visiting medical student electives. So you can see that I have already searched for that and search for it. This is going to take you to the first page where you will find your elective program. So if you search Cleveland Clinic electives, it is going to take you to other websites. So I would suggest add visiting medical student electives behind the institution which you are looking for for your elective so here i got like this 
web link let's go to the web page i'm going to show you so unfortunately due to the covid situation most of the electives have been cancelled for 2020 and 21 that's why i did not want to make this video but i get a lot of request from people who are applying for 21 22 season so that's why i'm making this video so i will quickly show you the cleveland clinic page so it's usually pretty simple so elective program then they say how to apply requirements frequently asked questions let's go to how to apply so and then they are going to give you for domestic applicants that's obviously for the u.s medical graduates usmds and uh, for the international applicants so you need to like click on this and make an account but this is specific for cleveland then they the usual structure is like this they will give you the application date so for blocks 8 to 13 that is usually maybe uh, april or something so you will have to fill up the application by october 5 uh, 2020 so and then they're going to ask you for the fee so the fee i cover that in other videos acceptance or denial is usually one month beforehand cancellations are you get the point right so let me quickly show you one without step one so in case let's say i search for uab so the same technique you i write uab visible medical students electives and i click enter so this will take me to this website and uh, hopefully this is the correct one because you can get really confused so you can see that the elective fee is 300 which is non-refundable and cost per month is 5000 that is kind of quite a lot but then again you uh, the people who don't have step one they accept these people so yes you can click on apply and then you can uh, like these are the requirements cv other ones which i went through let me quickly go over the elective requirements so dean's letter so let me quickly go over the documents which you will need for applying to an elective the documents should be usually on an official letterhead this is the official letterhead there is a stamp there is his date uh, the person like my dean he signed it so then it should mention like who you are like this is to certify arjun chatterjee like uh, joined the medical college at this year then he went on to like pass the first mbbs exam second mbbs blah 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 and then the important thing which the dean's letter should mention is if you uh, like if you have received any honors or if you have any achievements during your medical career like it should mention it the other two things which i would say like the dean's letter should mention are if you ha don't have any criminal records as per the dean's office it should mention that if they're uh, like comfortable writing it and then the most important thing is English is the language of your instruction. So this is going to be useful for the institutions which do not require TOEFL or TOEFL is optional. So if your dean's letter say that English is the language of instruction for all lectures and clerkships in the MBBS course, then you don't, won't have to take TOEFL. And uh, of course, and finally, it should mention that you are permitted to take the elective and that this uh, dean's letter is in support of your application for it, the elective uh, which you are going to take in the us so that's dean's letter pretty simple so next i will show you the medical school transcript so there are two transcripts one is with where you mention your marks and the second one is where you mention your uh, the amount of time where you rotated in the different departments so in the first transcript which you are seeing over here i mentioned my marks so there is this total marks there is this pass marks and there is the marks which i obtained so it should mention when you took the exam so in this case, the first professional MBBS exam, I took it in 2013 or 14, it was written over here. I just like removed it. So the it should also mention the total marks, the pass marks and your score. Or if you have a grading system or something like that, like change it and like put it like this and make it simple for the people who are going to like screen your application here in the US to understand. Like it should be simple enough for anyone to understand and whether you pass that particular exam in the first attempt or not. So it's quite simple so this just the first uh it should be on the letterhead and should have the stamp and signature and date that's obvious but i just mentioned it the second page of the transcript should mention like how long did you rotate in the particular departments in case general medicine i did maybe three months or four months so that will be let's say 16 weeks or 20 weeks or whatever so it should like mention like the amount of weeks or days or months which you like did before uh, like you're applying for the elective this makes it easier for the elective coordinator to understand like the rotations which you did before you were applying for the elective so like these are the two pages of the medical schools transcript which i used 
next let me tell you about the LOR again pretty simple should be on the letterhead should have signature and date and uh, the LOR writer should be uh, like a professor from your college preferably I would suggest ask a professor who you know personally and tell them that you are going to do the elective and like the letter should mention your relationship with the LOR writer so in this case he knew me from my medicine clerkship and like for, as a final year medical student then he went on to describe my strengths as a doctor and my achievements during my medical school career so yeah so you might require like two LORs so in the dean's letter if the dean agrees to write your achievements and if you have a personal relationship with the dean in my case the dean was the HOD of medicine that is the head of the department so I asked him can you like include your experience with me in that particular letter and he did so I used like the dean's letter as like a uh, second LOR but in this case like if you're applying for pediatrics or gyne gynecology or something else and you require two LORs like ask a professor ask an assistant professor get these things done let's talk about health and malpractice insurance so health insurance is quite simple you search online for health insurances like international medical health insurance I bought HDFC Argo in India that's like a private company and they uh, then I input like my date of travel and uh, my date of uh, departure from the United States so let me tell you something so when you're applying for the elective you don't require to purchase the health insurance you if you are applying online you can upload a document uh, signed by you saying that you will uh, provide the proof of health insurance once you are accepted for elect the elective and if you're accepted then you can go ahead and buy this health insurance sometimes the institutes are going to provide its own insurance that's like uh, I think that's kind of better because they will ask you for like $50 or $100 or I don't know like it varies from institute to institute and then they provide you with your own insurance just in case if you have to buy check the health insurance uh, like requirements from the elective website that how much you should cover usually it's around 30,000 to 50,000 and uh, the health insurance should cover the full elective duration this should not be an issue so for malpractice insurance I used academic medical professionals insurance I am not anyway related to them or like they don't sponsor anything just I want to put it out there I can provide the email address of this particular uh, private company here in the United States for you to use you can email them and ask them for a quote most of the time the institutes are going to include the malpractice insurance fee in the elective fee and like you will just have to sign a few documents provide them with the detail of the amount of malpractice insurance which you need and they are going to like offer you with a quote it's usually around 200 to 300 dollars like for a month I think I got mine around maybe 300 250 dollars so this is the most confusing part of the elective application and this takes a lot of time so a lot of people will not find their immunization records and this is quite sad in my case I found mine but still got the titers done so most of the institutes are going to use what you can see on your right the AAMC standardized immunization form but other institutes might use their own form it doesn't really matter so basically you will have to provide proof that you were vaccinated like maybe your immunization records you can like scan them and upload them if you have them or if you don't have these records then you will have to get your titers checked so I had the records but then again I got my titers checked anyway so the AMC immunization form will is pretty simple to fill up like when did you take the dose and uh, like if, if you aren't able to find your immunization records get your titers done from your institute or some private institutes this take a lot of time maybe like 10 15 days so like keep this in your head so all the details are in the AMC standardized immunization form which you can search go uh, in Google and download it's pretty simple to fill up but it takes a lot of time to get the whole thing done it should be filled up by your healthcare provider or your institute designee so that's like a doctor like who knows you well or like a your pediatrician or like someone like who is your healthcare provider next let me explain the TB part of this standardized immunization form this might be provided as a separate form by other institutes so basically what you need to do is either you provide a PPD or a tuberculin skin test or you need to provide with IGRA in case the PPD is positive or I, the IGRA is abnormal you need to get a chest x-ray done in case the chest x-ray is also abnormal that means you have latent TB and uh, in that case you will have to go and get treated that's quite obvious 
and uh, so basically if you have a negative IgRA or a negative PPD you don't need to get the chest x-ray it's quite simple like it says everything in this uh, form but it's kind of confusing for the first time if you're filling this for the first time so in case if you ever had TB before I would say like go in and fill in the details of like your treatment history and uh, in my case I got the IgRA done and I also got the chest x-ray done for the sake of doing it you can go and get the IgRA done only if I would have to summarize this video I would say the most important thing is visiting medical student electives like those four words are what you will need to find that particular web page because it's very difficult to reach that web page unless and until someone tells you how to find it it took me quite a while to figure it out but yeah I am sharing that secret with you and uh, most of the other things I have covered in this video apart from that if you have any questions feel free to ask me and I try to go over the comment sections read every comment and provide my responses and yeah that's it thank you for watching